Hi guys, it's Misty and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am a reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. I also sell antiques and vintage online and locally. So this video is one that people ask me to film quite often and it is a ship with me video. I have lots of things that I need to get shipped out. So I thought I might as well go ahead and turn it into a video so you can see how I package my items. I do sell a lot of items that are fragile and breakable. So I'll explain how I package those items to make sure that they arrive safely to their destination. And I am the type of person that I do make my packages pretty. It just, I enjoy doing it. That's why I do it. You do not have to do it. The things, the embellishments that I add to my packages, I either find at Dollar Tree or at the bins or at Goodwill. So I am recycling some things that were, would be otherwise discarded. So let's go ahead and get started. When I'm shipping, I make sure that I lay out all of the items that I'm going to use to get my item ready to be shipped. Um, I go ahead and I lay out all of the items on the counter that I have behind me, and then I find boxes that will match the size. Um, I use boxes from the USPS. You can go onto the USPS website, order boxes free, and they will ship them to you for free. You pay nothing. All you have to do is create an account at the USPS.com. Uh, but those are boxes that you would send priority mail. So that would mean that it would be something that would weigh over 16 ounces or, or over a pound. For things that do not weigh over a pound, then you would want to use just your standard, you know, cardboard box. I order a lot from Amazon, as a lot of people probably do too, and I save every box that I get. Um, I do order boxes on with my eBay coupon. If you have an eBay store, each quarter you get a coupon that you can use for anything on eBay. You can use it for shipping supplies. You can use it to buy anything that you want. Depending on your store level is how much of a coupon that you get. Um, so I get a $50 coupon and I buy as many shipping supplies as I can. Tape, boxes, uh, you name it. I try to get that as much as I can using that coupon. Um, I have also ordered boxes on Amazon and they're sometimes cheaper. So you just type in the box size that you want and look and compare prices. It's a cardboard box. I mean, you can, you can read the reviews, but at the end of the day, go for the cheapest box. That's what I do. And it works fine for me. All right. So you have your boxes and you want to protect your items. So what I use are Ziploc bags, these large Ziploc bags. I also use bigger bags that have a sticker that you pull off to, so you can ship your item. It keeps it safe from getting wet and you don't, it, it look, makes your item look a little bit more professional. Let me show you something that I just wrapped in a plastic bag. One of the items that I sold was this vintage Bozo the Clown lunchbox. Yes, with a broken handle, it's still sold. But I use these bigger plastic bags just to wrap it up and protect it a little bit more from getting wet and moisture. I still will wrap it in bubble wrap to protect it, the box itself, but this is just an added layer of protection for the item. Another thing that I use are embellishments for my packages. Now I find a lot of my items at Goodwill, at yard sales, um, at the bins, at Dollar Tree. I use Dollar Tree a lot. So I might send a pencil. I get these at Dollar Tree. I also have a set of some of these vintage toys, like the pieces are missing and they're, you know, they're not really worth much without the piece, all the pieces there. So these are little vintage animal dominoes that I'll use as a package topper. And I also have these are items that I, games that I've got from Goodwill that I just want the cards out of to use as package toppers. So this was the 80s game. So they're just 80s trivia questions. And these are from the Seinfeld game and they are Seinfeld trivia questions. So I just add just something fun. I also pick up at the bins a lot are just postcards from various places and I'll stick those in. 
And I also find a lot of thank you cards at the bins and at Goodwill for like 99 cents. You can get a whole pack of them and I will add those to my item as well. I also, obviously I use bubble wrap and I do get big bags of air pockets and big bags of packing peanuts to protect my items too. I order those through Amazon. These are the ones that I use all of the time. I do have an Amazon affiliate link. So if you're interested in buying any of the products that I've used and tested and I know work well for me, you can go to my, you can go to Amazon. I'll put the link to all of those items down in the description and you can find those things for yourself. And believe me, I have bought the expensive ones and I've bought the cheaper ones and these work just fine. So there is that. I also use tissue paper to wrap a lot of my items. I don't always wrap things in tissue paper. If they're a large item, this tissue paper isn't very big. Now I get this tissue paper. I did order this tissue paper from Amazon. I got it in bulk. I wanna pay, say I paid $7 for 50 sheets. Um, but I have used tissue paper from Dollar General, Dollar Tree, and I found tissue paper at Goodwill and at the bins that have never been opened. So I also use, and I'll show you what a package looks like when I'm done, but I use um, different kinds of ribbon to tie up the package. I, you can see this is vintage. I got it at a yard sale. I paid a dollar for it. a whole spool of um, ribbon. What is this called? Curling ribbon, that's what that's called. And then this, I buy a whole tool, a whole roll of tool for seven or eight dollars on Amazon in different colors. I did get this white because I knew I had the pink tissue paper. This goes, it lasts a long time. It goes a long way. And those are things that I use. I also ordered these thank you stickers that I use to close up my package. I put those on at the end. And if an item is fragile, I do have fragile stickers that I will put all over. Now, you don't have to buy any of this stuff, although you do need to have packing peanuts, air pockets, and boxes. Those are the main things that you need to have. Um, I also weigh all of my items before I ship them. So I get the item ready and I double check the, the, the weight to make sure that the weight matches what is in eBay. And I got this scale from the bins. It works just fine. I actually did just recently order a new scale because this one only goes up to, I wanna say 20 pounds and it doesn't have a hold button. So if you have a big package, then you, it's, you are like doing acrobatics to try to read what the thing says. The one that I ordered has a little scale readout that is attached to a cord and so you can see what you're weighing and you don't have to throw your back out to see if you can figure out what that says. All right, so let's go ahead and the first thing I'm going to ship is a coffee mug. A lot of people sell coffee mugs. This one says don't sweat the, or well, I'll just let you read what it says. And um, I sold this on eBay, so I'm going to get it wrapped up and packaged up and I'm gonna turn the camera down so you can watch me do that. Unfortunately, I sped up this video when I recorded it, but as you can see, I wrapped the mug up really, really well with a couple layers of bubble wrap and then used the packing peanuts to make sure that the sides were covered on each side. It's very important that you make sure that your item does not touch the sides of the box. And then I'm using the eBay tape to get it nice and secure. And then I'm going to give it away. And then you'll see me writing down numbers. I usually get all of my boxes ready and weighed and I write down what the item is and how much it weighs on the box. That way when I'm finished with all of my packages, I can just sit down and print off the shipping labels. In order not to make this video way too long, that po that portion I did speed up a little bit. You may notice that I did not wrap the mug in tissue paper, and that's because it w if I did, it may not fit securely in the box. And sometimes with mugs, depending on the size and depending on how hefty of a mug they are, I will double box them. You basically want to make sure that your mug is protected on all all sides of the box, that the mug itself is not touching the box. So whether you use packing peanuts or more bubble wrap, 
even tissue paper. I, you saw me shoving the packing peanuts down in the box to make sure that there was padding on all sides. Because you do have to watch the weight. And if something is going to cost me more to ship, I'm not gonna add more weight to that. So make sure that you do have a scale. That's one of the most important things that you can have as a reseller is a scale. They're not that expensive, but it is a definite investment. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is I sold this little spice tin. And I'm gonna show you how I, you know, I already have it in its plastic protectant. And um, this ha has a paper label, so it is, it is fragile. So I'm gonna show you how I wrap these smaller things in bubble wrap, how it works for me. Let me pan down here. Okay, so I use the bubble wrap. I put it at an angle. Then I lay the item on the angle, or on, in the middle of the, the bubble wrap, and then I fold in each side, and then I fold in each end. And then I use tape, to secure it. That's how I do it. That's the way that works best for me. I tend to double bubble wrap. That kind of rhymes. I'm double bubble wrapping. It just adds that extra layer of protection for the item. And again, you put it in the middle and close in each side and it's nice and protected. Then I'll take my tissue paper, lay it out, put it in Usually put it in the middle and just roll it down, and fold it up on the side. And again, you can use tape, you can just use ribbon. You don't have to use anything. You don't have to use this tissue paper at all. It's just something that I enjoy to do. And then I will, and I cross it just to make sure that it stays secure and the things that I put on top of the package will stay in there too. And before I, tie this last string on I'll put the embellishments on and I didn't mention that I always put a business card in as well you can order I order mine from this to print but you can also order them you can make them you can buy business card paper at Walmart and you can they have a free design studio you can go on there and design your business card for free and I'll I'll add a pencil to this one as well so it goes in just like that. And then my husband brings boxes home from work a lot. So I think this one will fit just fine in there. And I don't need to add any more tissue paper to it because I do. I did double, double bubble wrap it and I think that it's nice and secure. It isn't a glass item, so I'm not worried about it breaking. And then this is my eBay tape. I actually did not order this from, well, I ordered it from eBay, but I ordered it from a private seller. And sometimes you can get it cheaper when you do that. So I will go ahead and put this video on speed up so you don't have to listen to the tape. item I'm going to show you is a lot of breakables. So it is a lot of Holly Hobby, vintage Holly Hobby statues and trinkets and a little a jewelry box that's two parts. So I will wrap these. I'll wrap the lid by itself and I'll wrap the box by itself. Um, I will be shipping them all together. I'm going to see if I can get them all to fit in this 10 by 7 by 4 box. But I don't know if I will. So if anything, if I don't feel comfortable, what I will do is I will put this box inside of another box. So you're putting a box within a box. And I know that that sounds overkill. And I know that's going to add a little bit more weight to my item. But I want the item to arrive there in one piece because I don't want the customer to be unsatisfied with their purchase and leave me negative feedback and get a ding on my eBay account. So it's better to be safe than sorry and pay just a little bit more 
for shipping. Now, most of my buyers, I well, the way I do shipping is if it's over a pound, then I charge shipping. If it's under a pound, then most of the time I will offer free shipping. So um, let's go ahead and see if we can fit that in there and if I feel like I'm okay with shipping it and just without a box within a box. So let's see. Right here you can see I'm wrapping each item in bubble wrap and then I'm going to go back and wrap them a second time in another sheet of bubble wrap just to add that extra layer of protection. Once I got them all wrapped, I tried to fit them all in that box and they just wouldn't fit securely. So what I did is I grabbed two USPS mailing boxes, which you can order free on USPS, and I packaged them all in one, and then I added some bubble wrap and some air pockets. And then I used another USPS mailing box and I what it did what's called a Frankenbox, so I taped them together to make it just the right size that I needed. You're going to use tape to tape around all sides to make sure that the box doesn't come apart in two pieces. Now I'm using a large USPS mailing box and these have become my best friend. I use them often for many, many different things. Wrapping the item in two layers of bubble wrap really helps protect the item when shipping. So you had just seen some of the ways that I will package up some of my packages. When you when you have a box, you want to make sure after you've packaged it that you don't hear a lot of jostling around in there. You want to make sure that it is protected on all four sides, whether that be, like I said, with tissue paper, with bubble wrap, with air pockets, with um, packing peanut tissue paper. You just don't want the item itself to touch the edge of the box. So now all I have to do is go online on my eBay app and get these ready, get the address labels printed off. I already have the weight. I do need to take measurements of the boxes if I have Frankenstein a box or if the box doesn't have the measurements on it. The USPS boxes are nice and so are the eBay boxes because they have the, the, the weight, the measurements right there, they're on you. I keep a little tape measure next to my computer and I'll go ahead and get the measurements and get those ready to ship out and take them to the post office. So I hope that this video helped you in some way learn how to best package breakable items on that you sell on eBay or Etsy or whatever platform that you sell on. Now, like I said, you do not have to do the things that I did as far as all the embellishments and the tissue paper. I just enjoy doing it. And I like the fact that when my customer opens a package, they get a little surprise. And I have gotten repeat customers because they see that I take pride and care when I package items. So they feel a lot safer to order more from me in the future. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, make, if you're not subscribed, make sure that you're subscribed and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And I will see you guys later. Bye.